I, as I had promised in, um, in the course outline video, we are diving into our first lecture, which uh, talks about uh, just the basic uh, introduction to computers. So why introduction to computers? So I'm going to explain all that. So introduction, uh, we just assume that we are all at the same, um, same stage. I know some of you are gurus in the IT field. Some of you already work in the IT field. But for the benefit of others, we are going to assume that we are starting from the same page. So this will help you to keep abreast with world's ICT requirements, as well as future modules that come in IT. Uh, it also helps uh, you to be able to utilize a computer. So uh, the objectives of this course are to introduce students to the history and evolution of computers or let's just say computing. Um, another thing is to introduce you to basic organization of computer hardware. So that when you look at a computer, you understand what it is. You understand the peripherals. You understand what's inside. You understand compatibility issues and all that. So as for the scope, the scope looks like this. Our scope here, we are going to talk about the history and generation of computers. I, I, I always like to start with explaining um, the basic uh, computer uh, that we had, we, we, which we called an abacus. And I understand that most of us who went uh, through elementary school, we, we are familiar with the abacus. We will talk about that. And you see that the abacus is everywhere. We see it in grade one and then in university. Um, so another thing, we're going to define uh, some few terms that talk about computing, the composition of computers, uh, as well as hardware and software. Uh, I wouldn't want to just talk about hardware without talking about software as well. And then there's what we call the data processing cycle. How does data get processed within a computer? How do we get information? What stages does it pass through? So we have to have an appreciation of that. And uh, this introductory course is for everyone. It's not just for people who are going to do bachelors of business management in IT. It's for, I would say, all body. It's for everyone. Those who are going to do marketing, you have to have, it's now a basic requirement to have computer um, computer knowledge. So this is what we're going to talk about as well as computer classes. We'll classify computer and then we'll conclude. So the generations, here we had the first generation. Uh, before I talk about this, there was the abacus. We're going to see it in the next slides. So the first generation, which was from 1940 to 1956, we had what we call vacuum tubes for secretary, magnetic drums for memory, which were very huge and they were expensive to operate. And they used a great deal of energy. They generated a lot of heat and caused a lot of malfunction. If you had to go to um, Taiwan, and even see the exchange room, the legacy exchange, uh, co-exchange uh, rooms, you'd see that the legacy systems were manual and they used a lot of uh, vacuum tubes instead of transistors. Now we have transistors. They have changed the game, the transistors. And then computers um, of, you know, uh, long ago, they um, could solve only one problem at a time. They could solve one problem at a time. So um, they required a great deal of uh, time as well as resources to process pretty easy thing. So inputs based on 
punched cards and paper tape. So information was pre-recorded um, in some kind of a cord by punching holes on cards. And then you would have to, the machines would have to decode the information punched on the cards. So this was pretty hectic, I would say. It was pretty hectic. Um, then the output was displayed on printouts. <laughs> Just imagine working with a computer without a screen. <laughs> Just imagine for once. It was hectic, right? So moving on, we had the second generation of computers which used what we call transistors. Transistors. And then computers became smaller in size by the introduction of transistors. I'm going to give you a short video of what a transistor is. You might have heard of transistors. Uh, let's say when you take your um, radio receiver unit or uh, those uh, cathode ray tube televisions. Uh, in short, I would say TV Chegozi. I, I don't know how to say that in um, in Nevele. But uh, in French, we would say, c'est un télé qui a une grosse tête. All right. So uh, the computers became smaller in size. They became cheaper. They became faster. And then, um, well, there was more energy, which was um, like, it was more energy efficient and it was more reliable. But then it still generated a lot of heat and that damaged the computers. And then we've got another language that, uh, well, we've got a language that these machines started to use. We will talk about these languages. We've got COBOL, Fortran. These were high level languages used by programmers. I'm going to describe to you what a computer language is. A language that's understood by the computer as well as the human being. So computers, you give them like a, a sort of a recipe and tell them what to do. That's a program. And I'll explain these high level languages that we used, which were very hard. And programmers used to be very smart in those days. It's unlike these days where people just copy code and then they edit it. Um, yesteryear programmers um, needed to be very sharp and they, had to be very sharp. So the memory changed from magnetic drums to what we call magnetic core technology. Inputs are based on uh, punched cards and paper tape. And, 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 and it was also displayed on printouts. And let's go to the other generation of computers, the third generation from 1964 1971. This one's used what we call ICs. IC. Oh, we, we, we hear about IC. We talk about IC. Ah, the, this IC for for my for my for my TV. Uh, it got fried up. This IC. This and that. Integrated circuits. We will do integrated circuits in computer architecture. If you choose uh, the IT route. If you want to take the IT route, we are going to do integrated circuits. So transistors miniaturized, miniaturized, which means that it reduced in size and placed uh, the, the, the shape of the computers and placed on, uh, it was placed on silicon chips. Um, well, we've heard of Silicon Valley. Um, does that sound synonymous, like uh, a whole place? Uh, being called, uh, being named after silicon. What was happening there? Um, all right, so increased processing speed and efficiency. And then there was the introduction of consoles, who we'll say consoles, like the keyboard and monitor. We we'll just say those were consoles. A console, you use it to plug into a system, communicate with it, as well as visualize um, information. 
So, interfacing of input and output with operating systems. We'll talk about what an operating system is. Let's just think of it as a dashboard. It allows us to manipulate hardware, the computer. And then there was what we call multi-processing. Multi-processing. So, all that uh, came about in the third generation. And then machines became smaller and cheaper. And more people could afford them. Now let's move to let's move to the fourth generation of computers, which was from 1971 up to now. So we had what we call micro microprocessors. I'm going to show you a few microprocessors that I have. I own a few microprocessors that I tinker around with. And then thousands of integrated circuits were built into a single silicon chip. Then there was the introduction of computer uh, networks, the introduction of personal computers, what we call a PC. It came about in the fourth generation. And then there was the internet, a network of networks. And then there was the development of a GUI, which we call a graphic user interface. It means that it's like a graphical, graphical um, interface that a user interacts with to communicate with a machine. And then we had the introduction of handheld devices like the mouse, the light pen. We had um, the PCs, uh, I mean, the uh, the tablets, uh, as well as the cell phones, mm, cell phones. Uh, I, I know most of you, you know, Chopa <laughs> he, he had a handheld device that we, he would keep, uh, like, on the side of his pocket, his dinner, uh, a brick of a phone. <laughs> so <clears throat> that, that came about in the... Uh, generation. So the fifth uh, generation, we just say is futuristic, artificial intelligence, computer vision, voice recognition. Uh, we do have voice recognition applications like uh, Shazam. It's an application on that you can download to your phone, and then if you hear a song that you don't know, uh, the 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 I mean, the <clears throat> musician or the, the person who sang it, you can just, you know, press, an, press a button uh, on the application that listens to the song and then it tells you um, the name of the song as well as the, uh, the musician of that particular song. And then we've got what we call quantum computation and molecular and nanotechnology for the future. These are big words. These are really big words. That's futuristic. That's so next level. <laughs> so this that's the fifth uh, generation, and this is these are the times of um we have living in the future right now. We've got um, artificial intelligence. We've got YouTube, Facebook, uh, predicting what we want giving us adverts of things that we want because of machine learning and artificial intelligence. I'll explain all these big words, uh, these big terms as we proceed. It's very interesting. We need to know what's going out there and, you know, walk around with so much knowledge that we can, you know. I, as an engineer, I feel like we need to apply most of this knowledge. So I would say that we will have a few practicals as we proceed. I'm biased towards practicals. So we need to learn a thing or two by doing. So I'm going to end this video um, on the 15th. Yes, uh, like I'm going to make this video 15 minute, minutes. 
so that I don't bore you out. And I'm going to continue in the next segment, giving you bit-sized videos that keep your attention at, you know. All right, um, so let's continue in the next segment.